Amen. Good morning, church family. Good morning, Love Christian Center. Good morning, Good morning. Facebook. Good morning, Pinterest. Good morning, Instagram. Good morning, Pastor Lasagna. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? I greet you in Jesus' joy. We want to praise the Lord for you being here. Praise the Lord for another beautiful day as we enter into this week where the seasons change. We will be moving from summer into autumn on Tuesday. And what a year 2020 has been already. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day, for this opportunity, Lord, to fellowship and worship you one more time. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this preaching opportunity. We thank you for the coming together of saints. We thank you, Lord, for the ability to raise our voices and to humble ourselves in your presence. We thank you, Father, for the way that you love us, the way that you keep us and sustain us. And we'll be careful to give your name all the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God, and it is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Amen. This week, this week was a tough week for me leading up to this preaching opportunity as I struggled with the realities of just how unfair this life can be. We found out that the city of Louisville believes that Black Lives Matter, $12 million worth, and as I did my research, I find that black lives have become a commodity traded by municipalities like chattel. And once again, we have find ourselves becoming bought and paid for, but with a twist, in that now they pay for us when we are dead rather than when we are alive. Yes. My fellow Baltimore City College High School alum, Corinne Gaines, her life was purchased for $38 million by Baltimore County Police when they killed her in her home unjustly. A hidden cost of Chicago police misconduct has cost that city $662 million since 2004. Across this country, the numbers are staggering. What municipalities are paying for black lives? Innocent lives taken too soon. It's okay to get quiet because this is a serious message. Black lives do matter. Yes, all lives matter. Amen. But now we are seeing far too often that monies are being paid to quelch and quench the uproar 
for the innocent taking of a black life. We're fed up. We're tired of it. And no amount of money will satisfy the innocent taking of a life. You go to Google. Google is a powerful tool. Go to Google and take a look at how much money cities are paying for the atrocities of those who have taken an oath to protect and serve. I want to say the name Breonna Taylor. I want to say the name Corinne Gaines. And I want to say the name of Betty Jones, whose life was bought for $16 million by Chicago's alderman, who, and I quote, said, let's settle this before it goes to court and costs us twice as much. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was reminded as I did my research of 57 years ago this week, when four little girls over in Birmingham at the 16th Street Baptist Church, when their lives ceased to matter, when, when four KKK members planted dynamite with a timer detonated and set to explode during the Sunday school hour. I want to say the name of Annie Mae Collins. I want to say the name of Cynthia Wesley. I want to say the name of Carol Robertson. I want to say the name of Carol Denise McNair. These four young ladies all killed by the KKK, but it blew up in their face. Because these senseless killings was the impetus that propelled the civil rights movement. This was what tipped the scale. This was when we the people stood up and said enough is enough. Mm -hmm. We will not take it anymore. They were the George Floyds and the Breonna Taylors of their day, and we need to say their names. Amen. I want to share with you today a message entitled, Say Her Name. Amen. I want to go on to say the name of Simone Thomas, the daughter of my co-worker, who after dealing with injury and infection for five years, finally had to turn to amputation of her left leg on Friday. And now this mother of three must rehab and go forward with the rest of her life as a testimony to the will of God. We will pray God's healing and anointing over her life as we lift up her name before the Lord in intercession. Say the name of Simone Thomas. And you know, we often see these atrocities and the first thing we think is, man, that's unfair. So many times we see things that are unfair and the truth is, Things in this life are not fair. We look around and we see injustices all around us. So on last week, Pastor Lasagna told you about topical messages. And this is one, and the topic is injustice. Yes. Now let's take a look at the scriptures that support this topic. 
you might want to take your pencil and paper and jot them down because there are many. First we see in Amos 5 and 2 where Scripture says, but let justice run down like water mm -hmm. and righteousness like a mighty stream. Proverbs 21 and 3 says, to do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. More acceptable than the $12 million that the municipalities want to pay. Where is the justice? No one has been held accountable. Proverbs 28 and 5 says, evil men do not understand justice. But those who seek the Lord understand all. Isaiah 56, 1 and 2 says, Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, for my salvation is about to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who lays hold on it, who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Ecclesiastes 5, 8 and 9 says, If you see a poor person oppressed by the powerful and justice being miscarried throughout the land, don't be surprised. For every official is under orders from higher up, and matters of justice only get lost in red tape and controversy. Even the king milks the land for his own profit. Wow. And we say, man, that's unfair. That's not right. And you're right. But so many times, this is what we see time after time after time, and the truth is that many things in life are unfair. And there are times when we want to say, why me, Lord? And the Lord says, why not you? Are you not my child? Where were you when I put the stars yeah, in the sky? Am I not still in control? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have to subjugate ourselves to his will and to his way and say, yes, Lord. And we have to pray that you strengthen our unbelief. For we know that your ways are not our ways. Our ways are not your ways. And we have to stand firm in our faith. We've been talking about faith a lot here lately. Because in these times, to keep your mind intact. Because, you know, we are being pushed close to the edge. And we're trying not to lose our heads. Well, amen, amen, amen. People who can't defend themselves are being taken advantage of. The poor are being exploited and oppressed. The elderly are being tricked out of their income and taken advantage of for their kindness. And we're seeing all of that and hearing of that. We are still shocked when we hear of another injustice. We're still shocked when we hear about a school being shot up. We're still shocked when a former disgruntled employee walks into his former employer and shoots up the place. But it continues to happen. And we continue to be shocked. Corruption, greed, Injustice trickled down from the top of government down to the lowly taxpayer. You got all these people watching each other, and most of them are not making sure that people are not being taken advantage of, but they're making sure that someone else is not filling their pockets more than they're filling their own. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. We see the commercials on TV about Senator Purdue 
Soon as he got the coronavirus brief, started investing in medical companies instead of trying to take care of the citizens of his constituency. And if they get caught, they just say, well, I was just doing what I was told. I, was, I thought I was doing the right thing. I, I didn't know. But ignorance of the law is no excuse. Well. One example of the rich taking advantage of the meek and lowly is when we see mining towns or, 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 or migrant workers. <coughs> My great uncle was a apple picker and traveled around in bands of migrant workers from Florida picking oranges up to Pennsylvania picking apples and they would live in these little communities owned by the owners of the orchards and the substandard trailers that they would rent to them and they would charge them enormous fees and the stores that they had to buy from where the prices were increased two and three times. But that was the only place they could get provisions. Wow. So at the end of a month, their pay was drastically reduced by what they owed from the company store. And the cycle continues. Still today, poor people are being taken advantage of. If your credit's bad, guess what? You pay a higher interest rate. Now what kind of sense does that make? You're already having problems paying your bills, now they want you to pay more for the same thing that a rich man can get. Proverbs 22, 16 says, he who oppresses the poor to increase his riches and he who gives to the rich will surely come to poverty. Surely. Justice being miscarried, a perversion of justice. When a judge or politician takes a bribe or a law is changed to benefit the crooked or promote more injustices, then you have the law and all it stands for begin to crumble the very society that we live in. When government officials or one in a leadership position, preachers, coaches, teachers, judges, and prosecutors turn a blind eye, a blind eye to what's going on, then we have a problem and it spreads all over the nation. Romans 1 and 18 says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. A guy wrote to the newspaper because the editor had wrote a column about why you should be in church on Sunday and he said, in defiance of your God, I plowed my fields this year on Sunday. I harrowed and I fertilized them on Sunday. I planted them on Sunday. I cultivated them on Sunday and I reaped them on Sunday. And this October, I had the biggest crop I have ever had. How do you explain that? And the editor replied and he said, God does not always make full reckoning in October. <laughs> and that is to say that God will have the last say. Mm -hmm. And it's not this October. But it is going to be when you stand before him, when he sits on his great white throne in judgment and you have to answer for yourself. Yes. How will all this cheating and lying, oppressing people turn out 
to them that do it. In Ecclesiastes 5, it says, those who love money will never have enough. How absurd to think that wealth brings true happiness. The more you have, the more people come to help you spend it. So what is the advantage of wealth, except perhaps to watch it run through your fingers? Woo, that's a powerful word. Now, brothers and sisters, I, I, I want to say another name. And that is the name of Janice Pitts. Some of you local here to Douglasville might remember her name. This is the 53-year-old grandmother that was killed in broad daylight in front of dozens of witnesses in the busiest intersection in Douglasville by Dewey Calhoun Green. He rear-ended her car, and after she got out to assess the damage, he rammed her and pinned her between his jacked-up pickup truck and her Lincoln Navigator. He hit her, he backed up and hit her again, and when she fell to the ground, he ran over her and backed up and ran over her again, killing her with her daughter and her grandson in the car. This happened right here in Douglasville in 2014. 2.15 on a Wednesday afternoon. He was tried and convicted and sentenced to a life in prison without the possibility of parole. He spent three years in prison, and on the 1st of November of last year, the Court of Appeals overturned his conviction and set him free. Because of a technicality, because one of his witnesses did not get the opportunity to testify on his behalf. Now this was 1 November 2019, and as of this date, the Douglas County Prosecutor's Office has yet to bring Mr. Green back to court for a retrial. Could it be because Mr. Green's grandfather was the former mayor of Birmingham? I don't know. Could it be? Could it be that this was one of those backroom deals that was made, I'm just supposing, I know that the prosecutor, Brian Fortner, and the judge, David Emerson, knew the rules of trial and knew that uh, witnesses needed to be afforded the opportunity to testify, and I just wonder if this get out of jail free card, this loop was left open to be used when people forgot her name. Three years for felony murder in broad daylight in front of two dozen witnesses. And right now, Mr. Green is as free as a bird in Pelham, Alabama because the district attorney in Douglas County has failed to do his job. Say her name, Janice Pitts. Go to Google, check it out. It's unfair. So many times we say that and we think that. The truth is that many things in life are unfair. 
But our current district attorney, Mr. Ryan Leonard, uh, uh, I have not forgotten about Janice Pitts. Neither has her daughter and her grandson and her family and her loved ones. We have not forgotten and we will not let you forget the name of Janice Pitts. We will continue to say her name until you, Mr. District Attorney, do your job. I emailed Ryan Leonard last night. I encourage you all to do the same. You go to the Douglas County website and you can get his email. And just ask him, when will you bring Dewey Calhoun Green to justice? When will Janice Pitts get her day in court? They work for you and they work for me. Amos 5 and 2 says, But let justice run down like water, and righteousness like a mighty stream. And then over in Amos chapter 7 and verse 8 it says, And the Lord said unto me, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, A plumb line. Then said the Lord, Behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. That plumb line, that judge of righteousness and even uh, uprightness is none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the King James, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, it says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry, for I am ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Say her name. Brothers and sisters, I want to say one more name. And then I'm done. I want to say the name of the Honorable Supreme Court Justice, the notorious RBG, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who transitioned on Friday night. She worked her entire career to eliminate gender bias, stereotyping in legislation and regulations, and she was a sane voice on the Supreme Court. She was appointed by President Bill Clinton in 1993 as only the second female to ever serve on the bench of the United States Supreme Court. She served for 27 honorable years, and we owe her a great debt of gratitude. Say her name. And I want to close with a quote from President Abraham Lincoln. And he said that I have been driven many times upon my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go. My own wisdom and that of all about me seemed insufficient for that day. Sometimes we have nowhere else to go but to the Lord.
in prayer. We must hold on to our faith and take it to the Lord in prayer. Brothers and sisters, that is where we find ourselves these days. We must pray to God. We must turn from our evil ways. We must.